All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the commission meeting for December 13th. Would you all join me at, in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, Manager right. McGill, would you please uh, uh, take the roll? Thank you, Mr. President. Commissioner Grella? Here. Commissioner Silverman? Here. Commissioner Swagger Wilson? Here. Commissioner Flynn? Present. Commissioner Ranny is absent this evening. Thank you, Manager McGill. Um, we have a special presentation this evening. Uh, the Life Saving Award is presented to citizens and public safety personnel who participate in successful resuscitation of a person in cardiac arrest. Nationally, only 10% of people who experience cardiac arrest will survive to be discharged from the hospital. In the MRTSA service area, 33% of patients who experience cardiac arrest survive due to the efforts of the public uh, and response agencies like the fire and police departments that work with the paramedics and EMTs of MRTSA. With that, I would like to introduce the uh, chief of MRTSA, Jeff Worth. Josh, 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 my apologies. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Commissioners. Uh, thanks for having me here today. Uh, very happy to present this award uh, to three police officers that were integral uh, in bringing a resident of the borough home uh, not long after the incident. So the incident happened on August 6th. Uh, the three police officers that we're recognizing tonight, uh, four police officers uh, responded and were able to apply an AED, shock the patient prior to EMS arrival. And upon the arrival of our crews, uh, the patient had a pulse uh, and was subsequently discharged from the hospital just days after the event. Uh, and it is because of, as you said, uh, the response agencies such as the fire department, police departments in our service area, and the EMTs and paramedics uh, from MRSA, and also the uh, public. Uh, we've had multiple cardiac arrest saves this year. Uh, and they're not always the uh, police departments that do this. A lot of the time, uh, it's just members of the public that are willing to do good. So uh, we thank everybody for that. So with that, I'd like to recognize Corporal Corey Moltz. <laughs> Officer Elizabeth Lewis. And Officer Dominique Martinez. All right, next up on the agenda this evening is the, the manager's announcements. Manager McGill. Thank you, Mr. President. Earlier tonight, the commission met in discussion session and received information and discussed the following items. Uh, we heard information regarding an ARPA, ARPA, PA, small water and sewer grant for Beg Snyder Park for some storm, um, sanitary and storm sewer repairs. Uh, we also heard information regarding a proposed cooperative financial operations agreement between the municipality of Mount Lebanon and Dormont Borough. Uh, a few of the commissioners updated us on their activities of the various boards that they are liaison to as well. Uh, prior to that meeting, the commission met an executive ses session, excuse me, to receive legal advice from the solicitor on a variety of topics. Uh, we also discussed some appointments to uh, municipal boards. 
The commission also met an executive session on December 1st, following a budget workshop to discuss the manager's 2022 performance review. The next meeting of the commission will be held on Tuesday, January 3rd. This will be our annual organization meeting. That meeting begins at 8 p.m. in this room. The next regular meeting of the commission will be held on Tuesday, January 10th, 2023. That meeting also begins at 8 p.m. Here are the ways the public can participate, either either, either in person, you don't need to pre-register, just simply show up at the appropriate meeting time, time uh, or remotely via Zoom webinar format. Again, you don't need to pre-register, simply click the link located on the meeting agenda on the municipal website if you wish to speak during citizens' comments or during public hearings, simply use the raised hand feature on Zoom and you'll be notified when it is your turn. That is all I have. Thank you, Manager McGill. Uh, community highlights, Commissioner Silverman. Thank you, Mr. President. Medical, this sounds like a plug for Martha, but it certainly is. Uh, Medical Rescue Team South is in the middle of a membership drive. Uh, it works like this. If you're a member and you need an ambulance, Martha will first submit the claim to your insurance. Then you'll be billed for only half of what your insurance does not cover. Uh, that's extra helpful if you have high deductibles or co-payments. You can join online at www.mertsamrtsa.com or call 412-343-5111. Thank you, Commissioner. If you're a senior citizen and do not have the money to hire someone to shovel your sidewalks, you can sign up for a new program with Mount Levy Municipality to be matched with a volunteer to help you. Please email the event coordinator, the program coordinator at G. W H A R T O N G Wharton at Mount Lebanon.org, or, or you can call 412 343 7032. If you have time to help others, please also contact Greg or go to our website to fill out a volunteer form. Remember, you have uh, 24 hours after the end of a so snowfall to clear your walks of snow and ice. Uh, businesses have four hours. Uh, when we get deep snow accumulation, the fire department would appreciate if residents could shovel a three foot circle around the neighborhood fire hydrants. It helps the department get to the hydrants quickly uh, in case of fire. Um, next, Relay for Life again is sponsoring Light Up Lebo. It's on Friday, December 24th, and it's to remember those uh, and honor those touched by cancer. Luminary kits are available for $10 each at relayforlife.org. Uh, slash PA Mount Lebanon, and the proceeds go to the American Cancer Society. Finally, the commission and staff of the municipality Mount Lebanon wish you and your family the happiest of holidays and a wonderful new year. For those of you who choose to make your home in Mount Lebanon, uh, we thank you. Uh, and all of us send everyone best wishes for a safe, healthy, and enjoyable 2023. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner thank you. Silverman. Uh, sadly, uh, Junior Commissioner Amy Tan could not be with us this evening, uh, so we will not get to have her join us on this, her last meeting with the Commission, uh, but we do have a gift for her uh, to thank her for her, her time and efforts uh, with the municipality. I know that we all have appreciated her contributions uh, during the meetings. Uh, next item this evening is uh, citizens' comments. Uh, this is an opportunity for any resident to express an opinion on any topic pertaining to local government. The commission enjoys hearing from the public on various issues and learning about items to address in the future. If you have specific questions, we will try to answer them uh, at the end of your comments. If we can't, we commit to getting you the answers as soon as possible. When I call your name, please come to the podium to address the commission. State your name and address for the record. And in fairness, we ask each speaker to share their thoughts for five minutes. The community is as good as each person in this room. We work together to make this a community that we can all be proud of, and we hope that the dialogue remains respectful. We also appreciate the audience's efforts to refrain from any behavior that is disruptive or might intimidate free speech. And this evening, we have uh, Colonel Hoon. Colonel Hoon, 456 Coolidge Avenue. 
uh, a recent edition of the journal Nature. It was an article on problem solving and the subjects were raccoons. You may not be aware of it, but raccoons are extremely successful mammals. And about the only thing that's limiting their range on the earth is temperature. They don't like it extremely cold. Well, the researchers were interested in exactly why these animals are so successful. And in studying them, they found that um, their approach to problem solving is spot on for a creature that wants to uh, succeed. You know, if, you, if you're into failure, <coughs> you're sort of worked out of the system in the natural world. Nature does not appreciate the stupid or the unlucky, just the way it is, usually die. So what it is it about raccoons that makes them so successful? The big thing is they do not repeat that which does not work. Uh, they try something, they're trying to get into a garbage can, whatever, and the technique that they're using does not work they move on to technique number two. Now that's completely the opposite of what we've been doing here in Mount Lebanon with the deer issue. Since 2004, the plan has always been kill all the deer, wipe them out, and we'll be in good shape. Now that's based on supposition, one of which is We've got a confined population of deer. That's never been the case. Deer move up to 150 miles in the course of their lifetimes. They don't recognize boundaries of any sort. They come in, take shelter, have a little food, move on. Raccoons would do the exact same thing. Now, we have not. What we do, you know, we, we've got this idea that if we just keep killing these deer, we'll get this under control. Well, that just shows an extremely weak approach to policy. Uh, what can you say? If you, if you do something and it fails, you should change what you're doing, I would think. But anyway, where we also see this is in the military. We've got a group of people in the military that are snipers. Those are people that shoot an awful lot every day if they possibly can, thousands of rounds every week. And uh, there's some cardinal rules for snipers also. You never go back to the same high twice. You do, our enemies are not stupid around the world. They keep track of what we're doing. If you go back to the same site to do your shooting, somebody's going to kill you. So what we're talking about is another commitment to always doing something to keep the opponent off balance. We don't do that. How many killing actions have we had in Mount Lebanon? Well, actually 20. And I suspect we're going to have 21 coming this next year. Am I right? We have another contract? Yeah. I mean, you got to get out there and kill those damn deer, right? I mean, they're a problem. Except, no, they're not. They're not a problem to most of us. They're a problem to you guys and your friends, but that doesn't make them a problem to the community. I think it's time we start changing course, start looking at what we're doing, and look at reality a little bit. 
not always in the balloon. Thank you. Have a good year. Thank you, Colonel Hoon. Happy holidays. Thanks for coming out. Uh, I, I do not see any other comments on uh, citizen comments. Are there any? Please come up, uh, introduce yourself, your name, and address for the record. I live on the north side of Academy Avenue, um, and uh, I live at 103, and there is a no man's land between my property and the property recently, 65 Academy Avenue. <clears throat> um, the township doesn't service this no man's land. It's a, it's a, I guess, an alley, if you will, that takes me back to my house, my, the back of my house for parking, that takes the house east of me to the back of their house for parking, that takes some traffic from Cedar Avenue. They drive that alley and they park in the back of their house. But nobody maintains that alley. It's terrible, it's in bad shape. In the winter, nobody plows it. Uh, one of the guys will, I'll go out and shovel it once in a while, but it's a hundred foot long, you know, 25 foot, 20 foot wide alley. And um, <clears throat> I reached out to you to try, I, unsuccessfully, I tried to get a hold of you, but I, I called Rudy, there was potholes there. I said, hey, can you please take care of it? He says, no, we don't have any <clears throat> responsibility for that area, for that land. And I said, well, too long, because no, nobody does own it. So I told him, I said, well, can I pay your crew, Mount Lebanon crew, to come out there and impact some of the potholes? And uh, he, I thought he was, thought he was agreeable to that, but it didn't have to work that way. The crew never showed up. So and I went out and bought some black tar and patched it. Maybe patch some of the holes itself. But anyway, I'd like the, the township to just to look at that, see why they don't maintain it. And uh, if we can get some help with that, it's, it's in bad shape. Mr. Jacico, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, since Rudy is not available this evening, Mr. McMeans is here. If you give Mr. McMeans your contact information or he can provide it to you, uh, I would tell you that if that's the response that you got back from Mr. Stuckel, that would be because it's a private alley meaning that it's never accepted by the municipality. So we are able to patch a private alley for the cost of time and materials, right? So there, there's an agreement that you have to sign to agree to pay. But that's not what I want. I want. I want to know why it's not being maintained by the township. Because it was never accepted by the municipality. So it's a piece of private infrastructure the responsibility for maintenance of that infrastructure falls to the abutting property. It does. Yes, sir. I wasn't told to me when I purchased the property. I can't speak to the disclosures that were made by the real estate agents that represented you. Or How the, can the we sellers? change this from being a private property where we, where the abated home homeowners, take care of this to the township taking care of it? We do have a procedure in place to request that a private street be converted to a municipal street. Uh, that information is on the website. Again, Mr. McMeans will be a good point of contact for you. Mr. McMeans is sitting right, right there in the suit. Um, so yeah. he can uh, sort of further that conversation for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then always uh, we have our solicitor available. One other comment, though. Um, when it does snow, when you do see a snow, we're landlocked. And we either got to take a gamble to see if we can drive over that or not go anywhere or get out there and shovel that 100 foot alley. And I don't think that's what you want your residents to. It, I understand your point, but I, I don't think you want your residents driving on that kind of a. It's yeah. deplorable. And, and again, that it, that is viewed legally as a private driveway. Um, so should I spend like a hundred thousand dollars to resurface that? Uh, I can't advise you whether to spend. Uh, but you don't money. want your you don't want your residents doing that. So I'm assuming. Well, again, uh, I don't want to. I'm not the solicitor for the municipality. He, he's here this evening, um, but uh, again. One question is that one is the question is is it the question of the ownership of the property or not wanting to buy? How do I buy the property? Property. Yes. Who do I buy it uh, from? <clears throat> it depends on how it is being used and how it was laid out originally. But you probably live in the middle of that area. Mm -hmm. You 
if you would take the stage. And the person next to me would own to the middle of the road. Okay. And what about the people behind on Cedar? Do they have any ownership of that, you know? Um, it just depends on how it was laid out in the easement. So they would have the right to use it if their property was not a class of land for that. This is a mixed-use site. In this case, it says to now use the shared driveway. <clears throat> I, I, I understood that. I bought it, but I just didn't think that the concrete was correct. Well, I didn't say that. The lease title does not stop with the driveway. It's not in my driveway. No, but it is a shared driveway. I, I think I have a survey of my property. I don't think it extends to that middle of that road. I'll, I'll check it. It's not going to share that. It's a presumption that if you're being crossed to the edge of the road, no traffic, no sideways, and presumptively you can ignore that. But you have to say the survey is not going to show you any of that because that's not going to be shown on the plan of record. This grade, if you were able to distinguish that out, if you have to think about it, you would presumptively own to the middle of the road. So, theoretically, hypothetically, if my neighbor and I said, okay, we own this alley, you own half of it, I own half of it, but let's not let these people from Cedar come back and do it anymore. Because we can do that? Depending upon how it was laid out in the eviction, is no. It was probably laid out on the plan a long time ago. We called for the plan, and if we called for the plan, and it was just laid out, then everyone in that plan benefits. I didn't have a file to put out in the plan. You just said, I, I own half. We, we, you actually also own to the middle of Academy Avenue, but you don't have the right to exclude coverage. We've had other residents who've asked very similar questions, and Phil and I and other commissioners looked into this to, to various levels, and a lot of this falls on what's unfolded in courts in different situations. I'm saying this because it's not a clear-cut thing. We, we looked at, into this paper streets. We call them private streets. We looked into it in the fourth ward and a lot of different places for plowing between what looked like alleys, but were roads that were laid out. Some were finished, some weren't finished. Some were dedicated to the town, which the town maintains. Some of them were. Again, it's, it's very sticky. It's very frustrating. I've, I've had conversations with a lot of residents who don't know the resolve, have roads that are getting torn up. I don't think we're going to be able to solve it in a five minute comment, but what I would recommend is um, having a sit down with the commissioner, maybe Phil and the manager to, to figure out. I've even had conversations with Ian where we've gone back to plots from like the early 1900s. And even then we looked at it and said, we're not sure. So without saying, hey, you're going to have to go to court or, or maybe it's as simple as, hey, we just plowed a darn thing and we get a lot of snow. I think we need to sit down and figure it out. Well, that's a very reasonable answer. I would love to sit down and, and, and further this because I've been here five years, six years, pay healthy taxes. And when it snows, is it the land loss? I'm not there shoveling 100 yard, 100 foot of, of snow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I apologize for not having ever been able to connect because this is definitely something I, I'd love to work with you on. Oh, I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that if, you know, you can connect Ian, we'll get a meeting and we'll we'll go from there. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, no, thank you for coming in. All right, uh, do we have any comments online this evening? Yes, we have one online. All right, please go ahead. One second. Zoom is not cooperating with me. Seth, good evening. Please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. You will have five minutes for your comments. You will hear a tone when your time is concluded. Hi, my name is Seth Davis, 26 North Meadowcroft Avenue. My intent was to comment during the budget period. Is that the time to do it here or wait till the, the public hearing? Public hearing. Well, then, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to you, Seth. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, with that, we will close uh, citizens' comments. Um, and I would like to go back to uh, item. Uh, number three on our agenda, our, as I see our junior commissioner was able to attend. So please come on up.
Thank you and good evening. I will begin my report as always with a brief update on high school activities. Congratulations to the Mount Lebanon High School team who scored a rare perfect score in KDKA's hometown high Q competition, beating Trinity Christian and Fox Chapel. Good luck to them as they advance to the next round. Congratulations to sophomore Sylvia Roy, who competed in the Toyo Toyota US Open and got her Olympic trials cut in the 100 backstroke. She swam in the B finals and had a final time of one minute and 1.89 seconds. And finally, after two years, the deli, the deli has officially reopened this past week. Stu students can now enjoy customized sandwiches in the cafeteria. For my last meeting as junior commissioner, I wanted to talk briefly about this very program. Community involvement is not usually on a high schooler's mind. There's so much that we do not know, and many of us do not know what impact we can have or how to get involved. Of course, not everyone is looking to get involved, and that's natural and right. But to those who are, this program serves a great purpose. To some people, especially youth, the ideals of democracy and community may seem abstract, but programs such as these show these ideals in action. I have a lot of gratitude for this eye-opening experience. I've learned a lot about how new policies are made, how projects are managed, and how citizen input gets taken into account. This experience has impacted how I view my community, and I am leaving with a better idea of how to get involved in it. The municipality has so many matters to attend to, and youth engagement is just a very small portion. But I hope to leave you all with the message that the work invested in youth engagement is meaningful. Thank you, and have a good day. Mr. Kent, thank you very much. And we have a small gift for you for, for your service. We truly appreciate everything that you have done and all of the insights that you have brought to us. So thank you very much. And if you don't mind, I'm going to come out and uh, stand in session. <laughs> Okay, uh, next up on this evening's agenda is item number five, Commissioner Drup. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of the minutes from the adjourned meeting held November 22, 2022. Move to approve the minutes. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number six on the agenda, Commissioner Silverman. Thank you, Mr. President. Public hearing and consideration of ordinance bill number 7 22 concerning municipalities' 2023 budget. Commission held budget work sessions on November 7th, November 12th, and December 1st. The public hearing was held on November 8th to comment on the manager's 2023 recommended budget. The second public hearing is being held tonight regarding any commission revisions to manager's recommended budget. Amendments are displayed on my right, the audience left. Um, Thank you, Commissioner Silverman. We will now conduct the hearing, and I we do not have any comments in the room, but I know we do have one in the audience. Seth, good evening. Please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. You have five minutes for your comments. You will hear a tone when your time has concluded. Good evening. My name is Seth Davis, 26 North Meadowcroft Avenue, and I just wanted to begin. You know, Mount Lebanon calls itself a walkable community. The word walkable has been embedded in vision statements and is a commitment by our local school district as they operate without buses. Municipality uses walkability in marketing documents, and it is included in almost every real estate listing attempting to attract people to our community. When you review the interactive map associated with the comprehensive plan update, you quickly realize that, that the commitment to walkability in word has yet to keep up with community demand. If you attend a traffic board meeting, there is rarely an agenda that does not have a new or repeated traffic calming request to pursue, yet we have constructed little to no traffic calming projects in recent years. I was part of a group that spent almost two years workshopping a policy with a stated commitment to consider all users on our streets. But with that said, I can hear the practitioners and collaborators I've studied saying, follow the money. You can glean the true priorities of the community from how they spend their money. This budget is out of steps with the values of the community. The commitments and policy made by this commission and the demands of our public. 
The budget shows reductions in funding for pedestrian routes and a reduction in funds for the traffic calming program. It proposes a significant increase in traffic enforcement. Have we fixed the sidewalks damaged by municipal trees or created ones where they do not exist on streets dubbed as safe walking routes? The sidewalk in Edward Avenue that my children have dubbed the silly sidewalks would say otherwise. Have we rectified all of our traffic calming proposals? The unfunded Arden Road design would say otherwise. National, nationally recognized safe street organizations, best practice design firms, local and regional advocacy groups, and the federal government have moved away from traffic enforcement as a primary option for creating safe and walkable community. This is especially true in Pennsylvania, where local departments don't have the tools such as lo using radar. I urge this commission to pursue a holistic vision and create a community-focused safe streets for all strategy. This budget does not get us there. It is a budget out of step with our guiding principles. It is out of step with our freshly minted complete streets policy passed last month. It is out of step with the public's demands for safer streets. The first step is to rebalance the funds allocated to enforcement and move them toward street design and traffic calming efforts. Design is 24-7, 365. Our local department cannot compete with design. They do not have the staffing nor skill set to compete with appropriate safe street design. Their resources are best used elsewhere for policing activities. Without a data-driven analysis and review of the impact of current enforcement efforts on speeding, red light infractions, crashes, and general mobility safety, the proposed expansion of traffic enforcement funding is a bad investment. The community deserves a better strategy for our streets. The community has asked for a better plan. It is time that our budget reflects our community vision and bottom line. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Davis, thank you for your comments. Uh, I would just note that uh, the commission has allocated 140, uh, the numbers are very small, 146,000 for the Arden uh, Road Traffic Calming Project. Um, and we have dedicated $20,000 uh, to general traffic calming yet in the current budget. Um, recognizing that uh, this is a journey um, yeah, that we have all committed to being on. Um, complete streets is important and we do agree that walkability is very important in this community. Um, th this, yeah, there are many steps that need to be taken. Um, it is my hope that you know, these steps that we took this year, you know, while incremental, uh, will inform uh, the steps that will be taken next year, which again, um, I do hope will set us on a much more robust path going forward. But I do appreciate your comments um, and your continued dedication to uh, this topic, which is important to uh, our whole community. Thank you. Do we have any other comments in the room for the budget? Hearing none. Nancy Colton. Oh, uh, do we have any? Okay, yes. We will close the uh, hearing. And with that, with that, Mr. President, I move to enact ordinance bill number seven dash twenty two. Do we have a second? Second. Moving seconded. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven on the agenda, Commissioner Swaggart Wilson, please. Thank you, Mr. President. This is consideration of ordinance bill number 8-22, fixing the tax rate for the year of 2023. The municipality will be reaffirming its tax rate in accordance with the adopted budget. The tax rate for general purposes is currently 4.91 mils. The tax shall remain the same at a fixed rate of 4.91 mils for the year 2023 and continue in force for each successive calendar year without annual reenactment unless the tax is subsequently changed. This ordinance was introduced on November 8, 2022. I move we enact ordinance bill number 8 22. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item number eight, Commissioner Silverman. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of Warden Bill number 9 22, establishing compensation for employees for 2023. This ordinance established the pay raises, excuse me, pay rates and levels for employees for those covered by collective bargaining for 2023. It also sets hours of work and overtime, longevity, and fringe benefits. This ordinance was enacted November 22nd, 2022. I move to enact ordinance bill number 
excuse me, was introduced November 22nd, 2022. I move to enact Ordinance Bill number 9 22. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any additional questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Motion carries. Item number nine, Commissioner Grella, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of resolution number R 24 22, adopting the Capital Improvement Program, CIP, for 2023 through 2027. As required by the Charter, Capital Improvement Program, CIP, for 2023 through 2027, was submitted to the Commission on August 1st, 2022. Copies of the document were placed at the Library, Municipal Building, and website. Public hearing was held on October 11, 2022. I move to adopt resolution number R-24-22. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 10, Commissioner Silverman. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of resolution number R-25-22, designating a depository for the funds of Mount Lebanon for all primary banking activities. Municipality must designate a depository each year for its funds. Director of Finance recommends municipality retain a depository of First National Bank for all primary banking activities. I move to adopt resolution number R-25-22. Second. All right, moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And number 11, Commissioner Slaughter Wilson. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of resolution number R-26-22, designating a depository for the funds of Mount Lebanon. The municipality must designate a depository each year for its funds. The Director of Finance recommends that the municipality retain depository of West Banco Bank for the Treasurer's account and Petty Cash account. I move that we adopt resolution number R-26-22. Second. Move and seconded. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Commissioner Slaughter Wilson, the floor is still yours. <laughs> Thank you. Consideration of resolution number R-27-22, establishing employee contributions for the pension plans for 2023. Each year, the employee contribution levels must be set for the municipality's pension plans. The calculation is done in accordance with state law, and the contribution levels are collectively bargained with each employee group. Employee contributions for 2023 to the Mount Lebanon Police, Fire, and General Pension Plans are hereby established as follows. For the police, 4.5% of total eligible compensation. For fire, hired prior to August 28, 2011, 4.5% of total compensation. Hired after August 28, 2011, 4.5% of base salary and longevity. General employees hired prior to January 1, 2012, 4.5% of total compensation. Hired after January 1, 2012, 4.5% of base salary and longevity. I move to adopt resolution number R2722. Second. I move and second it. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 13, Commissioner Grella, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of the resolution number R-28-22, adopting the 2023 Comprehensive Fee Schedule. The Commission has reviewed and is now approving the proposed 2023 <coughs> Comprehensive Fee Schedule for Municipal Operations and Activities. I move to adopt resolution number R-28-22. Second. We move and second it. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. Commissioner Silverman, item number 14. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of resolution number R-9-22, approval and amendment to the original Army Grant Agreement 1196-9766A, Bower Hill Road and Senior Road Improvements. An automated red light enforcement, Arley, Grant was awarded to the municipality for improvements at the intersection of Bower Hill Road and Seager Road. 
the grant agreement with PennDOT is agreement number 119766A. The grant was set to expire on October 28, 2022. The extension request was submitted, was submitted to PennDOT on August 10, 2022, and subsequently approved. Agreement number 119766A is now will now expire on March 28, 2023. In addition to the grant extension, PennDOT is also requiring an amendment to the original grant agreement. In order to be able to proceed with the execution of the amendment to the agreement, a resolution needs to be passed by commission that will authorize the municipal manager to sign the amendment to the Arley Grant Agreement number 119766A. I move to adopt resolution number R-29-22, authorize the municipal manager as the designated signatory to the proposed amendment to the Arley Grant Agreement number 119766A. Second. So moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item number 15, Commissioner Schwager Wilson, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Consider Consideration of resolution number R-30-22 for approval of an amendment to the original Arlington <laughs> Agreement number 119766A, <clears throat> Washington Road and Bower Hill Road Improvements, an, an automated red light enforcement Arley grant was awarded to the municipality for improvements at the intersection of Washington Road and Bower Hill Road. The grant agreement with PennDOT is agreement number 119767A. The grant was set to expire on October 28, 2022. An extension request was submitted to PennDOT on August 10, 2022 and subsequently approved. Agreement number 119767 will now expire on November 28, 2023. In addition to the grant extension, PennDOT is also requiring an amendment to the original grant agreement. In order to be able to proceed with the execution of the amendment to the agreement, a resolution needs to be passed by the commission that will authorize the municipal manager to sign the amendment to the Arley Grant Agreement number 119767A. I move to adopt resolution number R-30-22 authorizing the municipal manager as the designated signatory of the proposed amendment to Arley Grant Agreement number 119767A. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 16, Commissioner Drella. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of resolution number R-31-22 regarding a PennDOT Copton Road non-reimbursable cost-sharing agreement. The Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, PennDOT, has requested the municipality prepare and sign a resolution and enter into a non-reimbursable cost-sharing agreement to have its contractors install ADA ramps along Cochrane Road during the upcoming PennDOT resurfacing program. The municipality will be responsible for approximately $5,600 or 20% of the total cost to install five new ramps. I move to adopt resolution number R-31-22 to approve entering into a non-reimbursable cost-sharing agreement with PennDOT for ADA ramp installation along portions of Cochrane Road. Second. So moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item number 17, the floor is still yours, Commissioner Drella. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration. For adoption of the concurring resolution number R-32-22 for a 2022 ARPA, A-R-P-A, P-A small water and sewer grant for the Beggs Snyder Park sewer repairs project. An application for a Department of Community and Economic Development, DCED, P-A small water and sewer projects, P-A-S-W-S. Grants is being prepared for storm and sanitary sewer repairs in Beggs Snyder Park. The repairs include repairs or replacement of sanitary lines, manholes, and storm sewer improvements to reduce the water entering the sanitary system. The grant requires a minimum of 15% match or $77,496 commitment from the municipality and passage of a resolution. I move to adopt the concurring resolution number R-32-22 
for the 2022 ARPA PA Small Water and Sewer Grant for the Bag Snyder Park Sewer Repairs Project and submission of the grant application, including all required documentation. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Commissioner Silverman, I may. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of an agreement by and between Municipality of Mount Lebanon and the Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council Carpenters. The Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council Carpenters is the union representing Mount Lebanon's public works employees. The current labor contract with this group expires on December 31st, 2022. The new agreement is for a four year period and provides for wage increases, changes in compensation, post retirement benefits, and clarification of other benefits. I move to approve the collective bargaining agreement by and between the Municipality of Mount Lebanon and the Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters that authorize the proper municipal officials to execute the agreement. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item number 19, Commissioner Spargo Wilson. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration for the purchase of an automated material handling equipment for the library. The library is scheduled to replace its aging 3M Automate Materials Handling, AMH, equipment in 2024. Over the past 10 years, the equipment has processed nearly 5 million books and materials. After investigation and nego negotiation with the Biblioteca, the library is requesting authorization to purchase the equipment in late 2023 or early 2024. Due to long lead times for new equipment and the age of the current equipment, the library is requesting authorization to move forward at the current negotiated price by December 31st, 2022. Biblioteca is the current sole source for the equipment to be purchased. The total authorization is for $173,539.95 with $55,853.16 paid up front for maintenance fees for years two through five. Grant funding and alternate funding sources will be sought to defray the expense of the general fund. I move to purchase automated material handling equipment in the amount of $173,539.95 from Biblioteca LLC. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Commissioner Silverman, item number 20. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of the expenditure list for November totaling $3,983,646.24. I move to approve the expenditure list for November totaling $3,983,646.24. Second. Moved and seconded. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Commissioner Grilla, item number 21. Thank you, Mr. President. Departmental reports. I ask the report be received and filed. Fantastic. And report, Fantastic. And before we're done. I want to thank Mr. President for a fine year of being a publisher president. Thank you. Now, yeah. You have left some very large shoes to fill. Uh, you, you will do very well, but I do appreciate it. It has been, it has been a good year, and I will be glad to change that over to you. But uh, I have one more chance to say, meeting for it. <laughs> bang. Well, it. Uh, you said that contract number is important. I didn't take the <laughs> <laughs> I know. 119766A, 11666999A, 119669A, 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 119